Yeah, it is because, of course, we see uh, very hot temperatures right in our summers. Uh, so the question remains here, and this has been a lot of chatter around COVID-19, whether or not heat and humidity affect it and slow down its progression. So joining us this morning is a Dr. Jeff Langlin, a professor as well as a virologist at Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine this morning. Good morning to you, Dr. Langland. Good morning, Celeste. Uh, thank you for your time this morning. What are your thoughts on that? Um, in doing some of my research this morning, there have been some researchers who say, yes, we believe in this, that heat and humidity may slow COVID-19. And there are some other research and scientists, researchers that is, who really don't buy it just yet. Yeah, and that really is the answer is that we just don't know what to predict with this virus. Um, if we compare it to other viruses like influenza or rhinovirus that causes the common cold, these are definitely seasonal viruses that are sp spread by similar respiratory means. And so when we see the higher temperatures and the increase in humidity, um, <clears throat> the air droplets don't tend to stay in the air so long. And so we don't see quite as much spread during the summer months. Um, as well as we know that the, the increase in temperature as well as UV radiation tends to lead to, to direct uh, destruction of the virus. Um, and so we might predict a similar thing with this coronavirus, but again, it's a brand new virus, so we don't know. And unfortunately, there are some, some evidence out there suggesting that the heat won't have a large effect. And if that's more or less if we look at um, other countries like Malaysia or Singapore or Indonesia, um, these countries mm -hmm. are actually seeing an increase in temperature right now, and yet we're still seeing an increase in the number of cases going on. And so we don't know exactly what to predict there. Um, and historically, there was another coronavirus known as MERS that erupted in 2012 mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia, and that was during the summer months. And obviously, that epidemic occurred during the summer months. So unfortunately, the short answer is we just don't know. There's two sides to the story. Uh, my personal prediction would be, I think we will see the numbers decreasing a little bit, may, hopefully significantly due to the increase in temperature, but it's not gonna be a catch on that. As soon as we hit you know, 80, 90, 100 degrees, the virus is just gonna disappear. And, and I, bring up, I think you bring up a good point. The jury's still out on that. What about how this virus works? Um, we have about 30 seconds left. So if you could talk, I know that's not a lot of time <laughs> to kind of get scientifically into it. But um, right. if you can, in a nutshell, Reader's Digest version, how does it work? Yes. So it is spread similar to the, similar to the flu, where it's spread by aerosol coughing, sneezing, uh, aerosol transmission there, as well as people... Uh, getting it on their hands, touching surfaces like doorknobs and hand, uh, uh, faucet handles, and come in contact with the virus there. You touch that handle, then touch your face, you're going to get it into your respiratory system here. Um, the virus gets into the lungs, infects the lower respiratory tract. Uh, virus, like normal viruses do, they get into the cells, replicate, release it back into the mucus, and that's what you're spreading from person to person. Again, most people have mild symptoms, and so don't panic if you do come down with symptoms of a dry cough or fever. Stay home, rest, take care of yourself. Um, if symptoms progress, get much more worse, where you have difficulty breathing, you definitely want to seek more medical help. All right, Dr. Langland, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your expertise this morning. Be safe, be healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, Celeste.